So if you managed, if the user managed to get to the good ending, we now have scene for ending good to work with. So here we have replay and quit. We're going to use concepts and code that is very close to the bad ending. So to remind you on the bad ending, we've got a replay button, which is a symbol with an instance name. And we've got quit button with a symbol and an instance name. And then action script. Well, in the good ending, these things here are still uh, just plain graphics. So we, this is an instance, this is a, a moment where we can reuse existing library elements. So uh, I want to do that. You may make new symbols of these if you want, but it'll be a little bit of waste of effort. So in the good ending, I'm going to delete those buttons because I already have buttons in my library. I already have MC. Uh, let me see, MC play, you know, quit and replay. Yeah. So in my library, I've already got MC quit and MC replay. So from your library, you can just drag in copies of those buttons that already exist. They will, however, need different instance names, but they're going to trigger the same functions as as the bad ending. So the one change I made here was that I added instances of those buttons that already existed. Properties, let me see, we called the replay btn replay, I guess we'll call it btn replay good and btn quit good. So replay, instance name, btn replay good because it's the replay button from the good ending btn quit good it's the quit button from the good ending so selecting that btn quit good And so what I need here is then code very similar to what we had in the bad ending, just to show you what we, what we need to do. In the bad ending, in the bad ending we had btn quit event listener function quit game. Well, then the function definition. We don't need the function definition. We only need the, that same sort of quit. And then we've got also the event listener for go back to the title. So one way to maybe do this a little efficient, efficiently instead of retyping it. Let me show you a trick here how I would do it. Then we'll then we'll do it together. But here's how I would do it. I would go to the bad ending and copy quit and paste it right after replay and then copy both because I'm going to need both of those event listeners. I don't need the second copy of it. I just put it down there because you know you can't select here and then select down here in the same selection. Then I would go back to the to the uh, good ending and then add those in. So let me do that again in a moment slowly. But the idea is I already have code that's 99% correct from another scene, I can copy it from the other scene. The trick is that I've got code in two different locations. So temporarily I copied one piece to another part, copied them both, and then copied them here. Let me, go, let me back up to do that, to, do, to demonstrate that again. So I'm going to the uh, bad ending. I need to take both the event listener to quit the game and the event listener to go to the title. So first I will copy the quit event listener, paste it right after the replay, select both, copy both of those, and then I don't need the second copy of quit, that'll cause a problem. So I copied them both at once, 
I'll jump back to the good ending. Paste. The order doesn't really matter, so replay first, then quit. Sure. Uh, the important thing is that they uh, they go to title, they go to quit. And also these are renamed to BTN. Replay good and BTN quit good. Because in this scene, we've got two buttons with these names that once you hit them, once you tap them, they will they will run the functions go title and go and, and quit game that we've already defined elsewhere, so we don't need to redefine those. Once those function definitions exist anywhere in your code, you can use them, even if they're not in the same scene, because all of that, all of those function definitions load up in the memory when the program compiles, and then they can be used throughout. So that that's all that we need for the good ending. These are symbols with instance names, and then there's the code that what happens when you tap them. So I'm going to run this on my device, get to the good ending see if I can replay, see if I can quit. If that works, then it's time to add music. Let's just confirm that that all works, and then we'll proceed. Okay, so I'm on my device. I'm going to play, go through the gate, go through the window, take a left, go directly into the center door. So take off one board, take off a second board, take off the third board, pauses a moment, goes to winner. I can then replay it, back to play it again. So that, so the replay worked. I'm going to do that again, go to the good ending. This time then I'll hit quit, and it quits. So it should do, those two buttons should then work. Right, so did that work for you? The final, uh, the final code there. Anyone need some help? <coughs> okay. Well, let's uh, start to add some sound. We're going to have background music playing on the different screens, and then we're going to also have different sound effects when different things happen. Now, I've got some some background music and some sound effects ready for you. Obviously, they work in the context of this haunted house sort of thing. You'll need to use your own sounds. And remember, you can use YouTube. So we can borrow my sounds for the moment. I put some sounds in the network folder. We need to copy them all. So minimize uh, Adobe Animate for a moment. And let's go to this PC on the desktop. Then let's go to the My Documents folder on the network locations. Let's go to our class, CIS126. Inside of the Adventure Quest code folder, there's a folder called Adventure Quest Sound. Copy that whole folder of Adventure Quest Sound. Copy it to your desktop or flash drive, wherever your project is at. So copy the whole folder. These are all sounds that I got from the YouTube Creative Studio, Creator Studio. Let me play a few of them here. You might not have headphones, so let me play them. Let's see.
So I've got a sound called four dash. It's just some jaunty kind of music. We'll use that one as the title of it. And then we've got the main the main game music, this one here. So this is gonna play as you're going through the different hallways. It does get it does keep getting scarier, yes. And then there's the uh, there's the bad ending. For the good ending, I'm going to reuse the title sound because it's happy. So uh, four dash, it's coming, and the rain are going to be the main uh, background music. Then I have all these other ones for different ideas, like Wood Creek. Okay, so that's the gate opening up at the very beginning. I've got a couple of crash sounds. So we can have a couple of crash sounds there. Got a couple of monster growl sounds. spikes. Now it says knife sharpen sound, but you get the idea. It's, it's spikes. So we've got uh, these different sounds. We need to import them into our project, and then we need to set them up to play via action script. These are not going to play on the timeline. These are going to play via code. So similar to how we uh, did the code in the tap frenzy to play music, we'll do it here too. So those are the sounds. Uh, if we go back to Adobe Animate, we'll go to File, Import to Library. Import to Library. And then in your project folder, you can select all of the sounds. That we just, uh, that you just copied. So select them all. You can do Control A or just drag to select them all. We're going to grab them all. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine sounds. You can have more than this if you want, uh, but you will have, I believe, at least one background music and one sound effect to add to your project. And I got all of these from the YouTube uh, Creator Studio, so I'm sure you'll find some good ones there for your own project. If you find them elsewhere, that, those might work, but there's a lot of good ones at the YouTube Creator Studio, plus they're copyright free and such, so they're safe for you to use in your project. I'm going to import them, save my project. In order for us to use any sound via code, we sort of need to give an instance name to the sound. Well, we give the instance name in the library, not the properties. So first, uh, we're going to go to the gate. We'll add the sound effects first, and then the background music. The sound effects will happen after some other action happens on the screen. So we'll go to your first gate, uh, your first gate scene in the library. All of our sounds are there, and I want to use the the creaking sound which is yeah where is it wood creek okay wood creek so remember you can click and do a little play preview there okay so uh, in order to give this a sort of an instance name here it's uh, technically a linkage uh, name so you want to right click We'll start with Wood Creek, so right-click it, we'll go to Properties. And this should be familiar if you did the, the, the sound in the Tap Frenzy. We go then to the tab of Action Script, and we want to activate Export for Action Script. Let's use this sound via Action Script, so turn that on. It'll export into Frame 1, it'll give it a class. That's the instance name, which is Wood Creek 1, which I want to change. I want to call this... 
Um, we'll call it Creek SND. This is going to be just a sound effect. We're going to have music and we're going to have sound effects. So this is a sound effect of a creaking, creaking, creaking sound. Um, click then, oh, uh, then click update, top right corner, and then OK. The first time you do this, you'll get an up, you'll get a little warning that says this class has never existed before. We're about to create one. Say yes. Don't show me this again. Every time we're going to do this several times, so we don't need to see it every time. But we'll do one first. So click OK. So now you'll see that on the right side, this sound sort of has an instance name. So via action script we can play the sound. We'll play it when the door actually opens up. The door opens up in the symbol. So if you double click to edit your symbol. So the door opens, let's say at some point we need to play the sound effect. Frame 2 would be Fine. Actually, how did we do it on the code? Did we do a play or go to and play? When the door opens, BTN play. Okay, that's easy. So we want to, we'll just do it starting from frame two because when you tap the door, the animation of the symbol plays. It goes to frame two and forward. So starting from frame two, I would like to play that sound. We need a blank keyframe F7 on frame 2 of the actions layer. The sound will start to play at this point in time. The sound is imported. It has a linkage or instance name. And we're going to start to then set it up and play at frame 2. So open up your actions panel, frame 2 of the actions layer inside of the symbol of the gate. say set up the usage of the creek sound effect so first we have to set up that we're going to use the sound then we can actually use the sound so var let me just check one more thing here uh, yes i'm just confirming here back on frame 1 we added some sound some sound imports. Yeah, I should be fine. Okay, so continuing uh, frame two, the gate. Okay, so we're creating a variable to store that sound. So we will call this time SND Creek. So it's going to be the sound effect. Colon the instance name of it in the time in the library and it shouldn't be the same thing that's why i put it backwards so in the library it's creek snd both of them will be black because uh, this sort of object uh, or data type is not previously defined so it should be black but we will see it here creek snd creek snd that should match equal to new space creek snd parentheses so we're saying we're creating a variable which will store the sound and this variable can only store the sound of an object in the library called creek snd so let's then create a new instance of it creek snd it's taking a moment to save here. Okay. After we've set up the usage of the sound, then play the sound at this point. And that's going to be SND Creek dot play. Okay, so it's not that complex, the code, 
this is what you need to do to play a sound at a certain moment. The complex part of it is remembering that after you import it, you then have to do right click, go to properties, and set up that linkage. FYI, mm -hmm. when I was doing that on my laptop, mm -hmm. which I think has the newest software, mm -hmm. or the newest updates, it doesn't have an OK button. You just have to click OK update twice. Really? In order to put the linkage. I thought we had the latest version here, CC18. But that's a good. You know how it does the little updates every once in a while. Yeah, one there was an update on mine a couple of days ago, and it kept crashing. I had to reinstall it, but I hadn't checked if that screen was different. So, okay, that that's a good point there. So possibly when you're doing this here under your action script, you might not have an okay. I guess you do update twice. Okay. So at this point, uh, we can do a little test. Let's see if this works. We have our sound in our library. It has an instance name, a, a linkage, that is. We set up our variable to use the sound, and then we say play. At this point, play the sound. Let me try it out on mine. This is a part where uh, let's ju judiciously raise the sound of the volume of our devices. Don't put it all the way up, because we have a whole full class of them. But just turn it up just enough so that you hear a little bit. I'll turn mine up so you can check mine. Or maybe if you want to use headphones. Let's see. We should be able to test this right away under play. Press the gate. Oops, do I have my volume up? There we go, perfect. It should play the sound. You can right click it and then you'll you'll have properties. You need these items right up here on the on the screen. Hmm. Mine's not playing, but I hear other people's playing. That's good. Yeah, it, that depends on the length of your sound. You know, we have a certain amount of animation here. We have a few. We have a few seconds of of the door opening. So therefore, if your sound is two seconds long, but we only got one second of visual animation, it will play the full two seconds. This would be the part where you would want to um, edit your sound. But what we're going to do to confirm to make that to confirm that that works properly, we will then on the next scene cut previous sounds so that they don't continue to play on the new scene. We will do that in a moment. I'm just trying to confirm on mine. Mine doesn't want to play. Let's see. SMD Creek Creek Sound.
question? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Angie, can you help me out here a moment? Uh, I guess he needs his things back. Okay, so mine doesn't seem to be playing, but that's okay. I'll check it in a moment. Let's do the other sound effects, which should be very, very similar. We're going to have the sound effect of the person trying to open the door. It'll play a growl. We'll want the sound effect then when we break the window. That'll be a sound. So let me just try one more time here. I'm going to do play. I'm going to hit the gate. Um, yeah, I don't know why it's not playing on mine, but I'm going to I'm going to go forward anyway. So I want that you hit the you hit the door, and it's going to be a growl sound. It's going to be a growl sound effect. So I've got a couple of them here. So I'm going to use growl 1 as the sound of trying to open the door. It's going to be very similar to, uh, to what we did on the gate. So first on that, we need to add linkage. So I'll start with female monster growls 1. Right click, properties. Action script tab, turn on export, and instead of that name there, we'll have growl one SND. Okay, so growl one SND, I'll click update on that and then I'll click OK. That's gonna happen in our scene one door. When they tap the door, it'll play that growl sound. So we need to do the same thing. We need to edit the timeline of that door. frame 2, F7 of actions layer. We again create the variable, set it up the way we did a moment ago, and then play the sound. So open up actions, VAR, SND, growl 1. So that's, that's an L and a 1. Be careful, it looks like two L's, but it's growl 1. Colon set to the linkage name space equals new instance of the instance name and then the variable name snd growl one dot play Okay, something else that happens in this scene is that the, uh, the window breaks. So to the window, I want to do like the exact same thing. I've got, let's see, we've got crash and debris. Both of them sound good, probably. 
crash. Sounds really good. So we'll do that one. Same idea then. In the in the library, you want to do crash one. Right click properties. Action script, export for action script. We will call this um, break one SND. So then the So then the movie clip of the glass breaking needs the other part of it, the VAR and all of that. So once I've added that there, update it and OK. Edit your, your glass and it breaks. Frame 2 should be fine as well. So F7 frame 2. And on that we need the same thing, VAR. Yes. At in the window after it breaks, that one will have no. That one is the one that does take us to the hallway. That's the one about movie clip this route. Go to and play the hallway. So then on frame two here of the glass, we're going to um, add the sound like we did for the other ones. We'll say VAR uh, SND break one colon linkage name equal to new instance of linkage linkage name and then SND break one dot play. Once we get past this screen, we will be in the main hallway. Remember, there's the painting. When we tap the painting too many times, that one falls over. That would that would, should have a nice sound effect too. We have I have two uh, glass sounds, so we will need to set up the second glass sound. So when that one falls, plays the second glass sound. So in the hall, again what I'm saying here, when the painting falls, it will play a sound. We've got the other sound here, this one is debris. So that one's going to be break to SND, right click properties, actions, Export break to SND, update and OK. We'll edit the timeline of our painting. This one's going to be a little bit different because it's not until it actually falls and breaks. So we wouldn't be adding this to frame 2. We would add it after it actually breaks. So frame, in my case, frame 14. Frame 14 is when it actually hits the ground. So frame 14 of the painting. After that remove event listener. We 
set up VAR, SND, break to, colon, break to SND equal to new, break SND object, and then SND break to play. So this is a great example about when code can be repetitive, which is good and bad. It's good that if I understand it one time, I just need to do the exact same thing a few different times, but change it slightly. But maybe it's bad because it seems repetitive or boring, but sometimes that's what a program is. It does. It needs to reiterate, uh, or it needs to iterate. A computer, you know, computers were originally designed to do mathematical computations. That's what a computer was. It would do computations in math. Now they do so much more. So a computer program, an application, what we're creating here, is that, and sometimes it's repetitive. When we when we then go to the right hallway, we've got the creature, and we've got the other sound. I want to use that one, and I want that one to be played several times, however, not just once. So we can replay, we can loop our music, our sound effect. Right now the sound only plays one time, but we can change the variable a little bit to include how many repetitions of a sound. Okay, so uh, female monster growl 2 needs linkage, so as usual right click that. Based on what we've written so far, we then export and we need to call that consistently growl2 SND. Update and press OK. Then we will edit. We will edit your creature symbol. This one we will add a new layer. We didn't have any special actions happening here, so we'll create a new layer actions. code is going to be very familiar v a r s n d growl2 colon linkage name equal to new linkage name object uh, then sound growl2 dot play but the difference here is I want this to play more than once so play the sound effect three times starting at the beginning when we didn't when we just have play, it'll play the sound from the beginning one time. When I want it to play multiple times, I have to specify at what point do we play the sound and then how many times. So in the parentheses, we'll say zero. Start from the zeroth millisecond, the very beginning of the sound, comma, and play the sound three times. So now it's going to do the growling at you three times as it comes at you. Now, I don't know if that synchronizes with the length of the sound plus the length of the time that the creature comes at you. You'll have to play with that. In my case, the creature is coming at me, I don't know, in four seconds. But my sound lasts one second. So if I tell it three, it'll play three times, three seconds, but it's coming at me at four seconds. I'm just throwing out numbers there. 
So that means you'll have to figure out at some point, if necessary, how many times are you going to loop your, your music. I'm just picking three. It may be too much, it may be too little. And now I've got those, that music there, that sound. Let's see what else. Those are all, okay, then the knife sharpen. Okay, so we've got the blades, the spikes. So that one's happening in hallway left, hall left, in the spikes symbol. Well, before the spike symbol, these needs a, this needs a um, linkage. So properties of the spikes, we'll say spikes SND. This is a spike sound effect. Update OK, then we will edit our spike symbol. And I want this to play when the spikes are fully extended, so that would be frame. If you don't have one, you need the blank keyframe on frame 8. That is, whenever your spikes are fully extended, not at the end of, of the symbol, but at the moment that the spikes extend, minus frame 8. And then we do the exact same thing. VAR, create a variable for the sound. We're going with SND spikes colon, spikes SND equal to new, spikes SND parentheses, and then simply SND spikes play. We don't need to specify a number of times. I think the, the length of the sound is good enough compared to the visuals, but if we wanted it to loop, we would add the parameters. Check one thing before we then do our background music. Uh, can we all check something really fast here? Can you go back to your start scene, frame one? And I want to confirm something. At the very beginning, we've got a stop command, and then we've got one thing that says media sound. Does anyone else have an extra one that also says sound channel or sound mixer? Or do you only have sound? Just sound. Hmm. I think we'll be safer if we do this. So let's just do this, I think, just to confirm some things. Let's go back to frame one of our start scene. And we've got uh, flash media sound. I also want to add import flash media dot sound channel. capital S for sound and then capital C, but mine is maybe about to crash. Sound channel, capital S, capital C. Oops, there it is. Sound channel. And then also import flash media dot sound mixer. So if yours worked, if the music worked properly, that's, I mean, if the sound effects worked properly, that's good. Mine wasn't, which is odd, but with these two extra imports, these are also related to sound abilities or sound capabilities to further control the music. I think that is more complete. So I'm going to test this and try to see if those sounds play. Let's see if those sounds play as expected when the gate opens, when the painting falls, when you break the window, when you go to the right hallway, let's see if the creature growls at you. When you go to the left hallway, see if those spikes get you. So there should be different sounds that play now. We'll do music if that works. And let me test mine. Oh, I 
see why the sound on my tablet was lowered too much. Well, I guess we didn't need that sound mixer, but we might as well we might as well have it for full control of our music. Okay, here we go. So we'll play gate. Okay, try to open the door. It's a little light, but I hear the sound. Break the glass. Perfect. Painting breaks. Go to the right. Very angry, very angry creature there. Extremely angry. I think we need to fix something there. <laughs> we'll fix that in a moment. I think we've got. Uh... Oh, I know why. Okay. Anyway. Um... I'm going to replay and go back. This time I'll go to the left hallway. And then I'll have the spikes get me. All right, the spikes got me. I can replay. Okay, the creature's uh, acting really, really, really angry. Uh, so actually, well, what's happening is that the we I have only a few animations here, uh, frames. So it plays the sound, it then loops. It plays the sound, it loops. So it keeps looping and playing the sound. And then I've got it here also three times. So that wasn't the best way, actually. Um, so you didn't need it to tell it to loop three times there. Um, this is going to depend on the length of your animation. And we will we'll, we'll make that work better a little later. We could add it to the main timeline. Maybe that'll be the easiest. I think this might be an example where it'll be more complex to set up the sound via the code. Maybe we'll just put it in a timeline. So hmm. I'm going to comment out all of the code in the creature. Instead of doing it as a, a sound via code, we'll just put it in the timeline. Create a new layer for sound after mine finishes crashing here. We'll create a new layer called music or sound. Oh, here it is. So new layer, music, on frame one of that music layer, the properties set the sound to female monster growl 2 and set the sync to start repeat 2 